today we are going to talk about swatching. Swatching is something that can confound you no matter what stage you are at in your knitting journey. So we're going to demystify it today. Now the thing is that most patterns don't really tell you how to swatch. They tell you you need to do it, that it's very important for getting a garment that is the correct size at the end, but they don't tell you how. So you might be tempted to do something like this. The pattern that I'm basing this on is the coloring book raglan and the tension in that pattern is given as 18 and a half stitches should equal 10 centimeters. So I've cast on 19 stitches, worked a squarish shape and you might reach for your ruler and check if that gives you 10 centimeters or four inches. There's a couple of problems with this method. That is Inevitably, in this case, we have a stockinette stitch swatch. Inevitably, that's going to roll and curl and create, but basically make it a bit tricky to measure exactly how many stitches make up 10 centimeters or four inches. Another issue with that is not only the curling edges um, at the sides, but at your beginning and at your end. And you'll see I've quite deliberately made this um, a tight enough cast off um, and it will deform the swatch a little bit if you have a tight cast off there too. It can be very difficult again to try and measure and get a consistent idea of what exactly your tension is when you only cast on the number of stitches given in the pattern. So instead what we want to do, and this is a swatch that I had done for a previous project, is something more like this. You really want to cast on extra stitches all the way around uh, the stated number of stitches and rows for the tension given in the pattern. And to give it a border like this, I default to a garter stitch border all the way around. When you have a swatch like this, it is much easier to take your ruler, mark the starting point and the finish point of zero to 10 centimeters. And then you can remove your ruler or use it to count the number of stitches all the way across. It would be recommended to do that in a couple of places across your swatch. So you might say from here to here, for sake of example, we would measure that more carefully and take an average then across all of that. So in an ideal world, measure maybe in three spaces and take an average of those number of stitches. And you could be fairly confident then that that is an accurate reading of your gauge. So then instead of this little scrappy swatch here, what I have done instead is I have created the larger framed swatch here. But we are not quite ready to measure this just yet because in your finished sweater, you're going to wash it and you're going to wear it. So in order to get a sweater that fits, this is our aim, we need to wash and dry this swatch in the same way as we would our finished item. You can do this in a couple of ways. One way would be to soak the swatch for 20 minutes or so, then roll it in a towel to take out the excess water, pin it down just flat, don't overstretch, don't pull too much, just to get it lying nice and flat, and then don't unpin it until it's dry. Then you can go ahead and do your measurements as we sh showed you on this other swatch. But more recently, I've been taking a different approach to blocking finished items and that is to first of all pin it while it is dry and then take um, a soaking wet towel so I would wet this out and um, squeeze the excess water out of that but still have it fairly wet and then lay it over the piece leave it there overnight take it off in the morning your swatch in this case my swatch but in other cases your sweater will then be nice and uh, soaked then you can wait for it to dry, take out the pins and go ahead and measure in the way as we were showing earlier in the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we're gonna come back when the swatch is dry and we'll take our measurements and we'll know what to do next. And that's either going to be work ahead and cast on on the needle size that I've used for this swatch or it might be make another swatch on a needle size smaller or a needle size bigger. And that's just going to come down to what this swatch tells us about our next steps. And it's a very good thing that I did swatch because what I discovered is that the swatch that I made in this brass colored yarn 
uh, was much too big. Um, each of my stitches were that little bit larger than they need to be for this particular pattern. Um, and that's because I was trying out a different style of knitting actually for that one. So things can change all the time depending on your, your stress levels, even down to the type of needle material that you're using. If you're using wooden needles as opposed to metal or metal as opposed to wood, um, just don't go ahead and presume that everything's going to be exactly as it was maybe the last time you used that yarn. So. I had to go and swatch again. Um, just for ease of reference, I changed color. And this time by going down needle sizes, I was able to get my tension to match that of the designer in the pattern. So that is what's key. That's what's most important is change your needle size. Any needle size that is recommended in a pattern is just that, it is a recommended needle size. So bear in mind, your mileage may vary do please swatch, it will make a difference. Even one stitch over the course of the full circumference of a sweater, it will add or take away inches, so it is important. This is something that knitters of all levels of experience often struggle with, so um, particularly even remembering which way to go when you do your measurements. So if something is off, do I go up a needle size? Do I go down a needle size? So we've created a flow chart or a cheat sheet that allows you to work through the process and it'll guide you as to whether you need to go up or down a needle size or whether you can just go ahead and cast on. So be sure to check that out. We'll have that linked for you uh, with this video. Um, keep it handy and use it for all of your projects from now on.